Welcome back to Get Fit Guy. This is Kevin Dunn. I feel like it's been a while since I debunked something, but this past week I was looking at some posts by a guy I know from Southern Cali. He used to own a CrossFit gym and has now reinvented himself as some kind of guru or spiritual leader, complete with long, flowing, sage-like beard. Apart from the claims that he and his fellow gurus are making on social media being worrying, I would say the most worrying thing is that there are over a million people following his nonsense on Instagram. This goes to show that there are many people out there that do have some kind of chronic physical or spiritual pain. They must feel failed by the healthcare system in order to take up things that have been completely disproven by modern medicine hundreds of years ago. It's all well and good to say this stuff is insane, which I'm literally just about to do, but it's also clear that something's wrong, that people are being funneled to these charlatans for answers rather than going to their doctors. And it's only when that is fixed that people can truly find help. I'm not, however, able to fix the global healthcare system. So my gift to you this week is to chat about supplements. Now, on the aforementioned account was, surprise, surprise, a discount code for money off, also known as a kickback to the influencer, on a supplement to decalcify your pineal gland. According to his post, your pineal gland is very important in the production of melanin, which has a role to play in skin coloration, and therefore how we interact with the sun. I want to say right here, that is false. The pineal gland has a major role in melatonin production, which sounds very similar, but these hormones do completely different things, and having a few letters in common doesn't make them the same. This is a really common thing, though, in pseudoscience, where people will mix genuine claims with false ones. Because the main claim itself is true, we then blindly accept the subsequent claims. So I want to say here that the pineal gland also does indeed calcify. It does so across your lifetime, and according to a 2023 meta-analysis, 61.65% of the tested population had calcification of the pineal gland. Age doesn't seem to be a factor, although it does happen across our lifetimes, but that's because in the study it's shown that it occurs in infants. So aging doesn't seem to be a determining factor. Um, It just seems to be down to your pineal gland's individual metabolism. If there are any doctors listening that know more about this, please feel free to send me an email. And by doctor, I don't mean chiropractor. Now, according to the account that I'm talking about, and many of the same ilk, the pineal gland is your third eye and connects both the physical and spiritual realms. Spooky. Now, the usual conspiracy theory stuff then follows about world governments not wanting us to see the truth, so they put fluoride in the water and that calcifies your pineal gland and that prevents us from connecting to this spiritual realm. But don't worry, if you place an indigo-colored crystal, something like amethyst, over your third eye chakra whilst chanting and gazing into the sun and spending all your available income on pineal decalcifying supplements, you'll be able to access the quantum realm. And in case you were wondering how long you'd need to be on these supplements, you could see results in a few weeks, but it may also take your entire lifetime. Cool. Cool. Got it. So just to summarize, this gland, which is indeed in your brain and does play a biological purpose, also plays unproven spiritual purposes for which we have no evidence. There's a global conspiracy, which there's also no evidence for, which is to stop these spiritual purposes. And you can buy an unproven supplement that there's no evidence at all that addresses any of these problems because they are in fact themselves made up. This got me to thinking about supplements as a whole, because it is a big industry. Apparently in 2023, it was worth $177 billion. So do we really need supplements? 
The appeal of supplements is really easy to understand because we live in a pretty fast-paced world where we all want quick fixes for everything, including our health. It's really convenient for us to imagine that just popping a pill can make up for a bad diet or a lack of exercise. Marketing itself can be very persuasive because it features promises of you not doing very much, but increasing your energy, your focus, and improving maybe even your lifespan. But the problem with this is that many experts argue that supplements simply just don't work. And in fact, probably won't work for you if you're not actually deficient in any particular nutrient. So let's start with multivitamins. For years, there's been claims that taking daily multivitamin is good for your health. But numerous studies have shown that for most people, multivitamins have no significant health benefit. A large-scale study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that multivitamin use did not reduce the risk of chronic disease such as cancer or cardiovascular problems. A 2018 review of research on vitamin and mineral supplements found that they didn't provide any measurable benefit in preventing heart disease or cancer, which are the leading two causes of death in developed countries. And then on top of that, we've got this problem of over-supplementation. Do you remember, like when I was a kid, I remember that people drank so much Sunny Delight they turned orange. Do you remember that? And it was because of all the vitamins which were in that. Of course, we know there's artificial coloring in there, but I believe it was the vitamin K that was like turning people orange. It was definitely something to do with beta carotene. Anyway, most people believe, you know, that if a little of something is good for you, then more of something must be better. And when it comes to supplements, that's not only not true, but also dangerous. A lot of these supplements are what we call fat-soluble because they're stored in your body's tissues and not easily excreted. And these vitamins A, D, A, E, and K can lead to toxicity. Vitamin D toxicity, although rare, can cause severe health problems such as hypercalcemia, which leads to nausea, weakness, and potentially kidney failure. So, Why don't supplements work as we'd expect? Now, there are a few reasons for that. The first one is bioavailability, and that's how much of it is biologically available, how much of it is available for your body to use. And this applies to many things, including proteins, right? So the most bioavailable protein you can have is egg. And that goes all the way down, you know, through beef protein, chicken protein, all the way down to sort of plant proteins at the bottom end of the spectrum. So... Not all supplements are created equal in terms of how well we absorb them and can use them within the body. So, for example, one form of magnesium, magnesium oxide, and another form, magnesium citrate, are both magnesium, but they're dealt with the body in different ways. Some of these supplements don't even survive the acidic conditions of your stomach, and others can't pass through the blood-brain barrier. So when they get absorbed you know, into your bloodstream, through your intestines, it's not getting into your brain anyway. There's also the problem of nutrient interactions because nutrients don't work in isolation. They work in an incredibly complex way because they interact with other nutrients. High doses of some minerals will interfere with the absorption of others. So you could take a supplement that throws your body's balance completely off. Um, We've also just got diet and lifestyle factors. Supplements cannot fix lifestyle choices. If you're eating a diet which is high in processed foods, you're not getting enough sleep, and you lead a sedentary lifestyle, then supplements are not a magic bullet for you. So what do we want to do instead of relying on these? I think the key is focusing on fixing problems at their root rather than trying to mask the symptoms with smashing down some pills. First and foremost, look at your nutrition. You want to try and eat the rainbow, right? So a well-balanced diet rich in different colored fruits and vegetables, grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats will provide most of the nutrients your body needs. You won't need to then go for a supplement. And unlike in supplements, it tends to be that the, the complex matrix of vitamins and minerals that are in food work together. In addition to diet, you want to consider other lifestyle factors. So, you know, 
introduce some regular physical activity, adequate sleep, and some kind of stress management protocols. These are all crucial for maintaining overall health. If you're not sleeping, again, a supplement to make you feel more awake when you get up in the morning or some pre-workout is not going to improve this problem. Exercise will improve cardiovascular health, boost mood, and enhance your energy levels. Sleep, we know, improves your cognitive function and immune health. And managing stress through mindfulness or even things that people write into me about and say they enjoy, but I haven't necessarily tried myself, like yoga, can have great effects on your mental and physical health. This isn't to say, though, that supplements are always useless, so please don't send me in hate mail because there are situations where supplementation is beneficial. For example, if you have a specific deficiency. If you have a documented deficiency, then supplements will be a crucial part of your treatment plan. But you want to have blood tests done. So you have a blood test done, then your doctor will say you're low in vitamin D, we're going to give you some supplementation. That's a thing. The next thing is, you know, at certain life stages or under certain life conditions. So older adults perhaps pregnant people and people with certain health conditions, they might have increased nutrient needs that are difficult to meet those demands through diet alone. And in those cases, targeted supplementation can be helpful. And then people following restricted diets. So for example, if you're following a vegan diet, you might benefit from supplementing things like B12, iron, or omega-3s because those are much harder or impossible to obtain from plant-based foods. If you do decide to take supplements, it's important that you do so under the guidance of someone that knows what they're talking about. So definitely go and see your doctor. Assess, don't guess, is always the maxim I like to follow because self-prescribing supplements can lead to inappropriate dosing and supplement interactions. A healthcare provider is really the only one that will help you determine whether you need a supplement, the appropriate dosage, and how to monitor any side effects. Supplements aren't a remedy. They can be beneficial in certain situations, but they're never going to be a substitute for a healthy lifestyle. The best approach to health is a holistic one that addresses the root cause of issues rather than trying to fix everything with a pill. Eat a varied and balanced diet, stay active, get enough sleep, manage your stress, and the next time you're tempted by the latest supplement craze, remember there's no substitute for the basics. Focus on nourishing your body and avoid getting health advice from social media, especially when the health advice ends with a disclaimer that it's not health advice because the amount of health gaslighting on social media is insane. If you have any questions or want to say hi, email me, getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. Get Fit Guys a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. Thanks to the team at Quick and Dirty Tips. Me, Morgan Christensen, Holly Hutchins, and director of podcasts, Brandon Getches, also Davina Tomlin. Have a question. You can also voicemail me. 510-353-3104. Again, email me, getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. Visit quickanddirtytips.com for more information or check out the show notes in whatever podcast app you're using. Mm-hmm.